It's done. They have done it. Bangalore has done it. They have beat the table toppers, Gujarat. They've picked up the two points and now they have put the ball firmly into Delhi's court saying, well, win your last game and go to the playoffs. Otherwise, we are there, baby. Are there? Well, Bangalore really playing a flawless game today. Getting to uh, their target well and good. Eight wickets in hand, eight deliveries in hand. Uh, Virat Kohli, well, very happy. All uh, all Indian cricket fans are happy to see that. 73 of 54. Faf got runs as well. Glenn Maxwell, a lucky escape for him. Ball uh, touched the stumps, but the bail changed his mind about falling down. But today, Bangalore was in no mood to fall down. Getting across the line, getting those two points and sitting with 16 at the end of their campaign in the league stage. This is Cricket Buzz Live. I'm Gaurav Kapoor. With me, Joy Bhattacharya and Pami Mbangwa. Great win, Joy, uh, for Bangalore. Comprehensive, decisive. You may be thinking, where was this team all this while? Yep. And their big guns finally all fired together. That Max was the difference, Will, wasn't it? The all of them. Boys, all the three big boys fired together. Maxwell with wickets as well. Three overs for 10, then 40 of 18 odd balls. I mean, they did everything. Virat Kohli, they had... If Virat Kohli looks at it, he'd probably look back and said, you know, all the luck you gave me for this match, could we have just distributed it over the past few <laughs> And maybe things might have been a little bit different because despite everything that Bangalore have done, their fate is finally still not in their hands. It's in Delhi's hands. And yeah. he'll just be looking and saying, could we have got formed just one match earlier? Yeah, true. Could we have got formed one match earlier? Or... The matches that we lost, could we have lost them just a little less? I mean, could we just have that loss could have been a little lesser of a loss than some of the hard blows and punches and first round knockouts that they had, Bobby? Mm, yeah, what is it? They, was it they got bowled out for 58 or something? And and also, no, that was 115, 115. It was it, what was that Delhi? 68 against Hyderabad. 68, yeah. it was. Yeah. yeah. So there were a couple of games. I just remember that there were a couple of games where you're going, oh, here we go again with with RCB, despite having all these stars. And in the end, and we talk about it all the time. Actually, we say, and I think at the start of the tournament this year it was Ian Bishop who went on about it um, right from the outset, saying, look, you've got to take care for, of it right at the beginning, that net net run rate issue. Yes, you're going to win the game. Yes, you're going to lose the game, but have it in mind. And so often people say, no, 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 no you, you can't be worried about that. You, you've got to be worrying about the two points. Of course you're worried about the two points. You're, everyone's fighting for the two points. Both teams are fighting for the two points. But should you kind of not be able to hold on to those, then can you ensure that when it comes to this stage, you're not going, what if, and maybe this, and maybe that, if we'd lost by less, and if we're this. Because it's, yeah, it's it's heartbreaking, I think, for many sides when they get here and they miss out only on net run rate. Mm, well, I'll tell you what has happened with Bangalore getting these two points. They've obviously made that uh, the Delhi's last game against Mumbai really interesting. And they've also eliminated the two games that are playing, the two teams that are playing on Sunday. So they're gone. Punjab and Hyderabad are both uh, bye bye birdie. So they've made sure that the last game on a Sunday is a dead robber. So that's fine. And we're all still going to be here on Quick Buzz Live. We, we deserve to phone one in after, you know, <laughs> two months of this has been a hard schedule. It's been more games. We deserve uh, the one. But uh, for Bangalore, this is what we've been talking about, Joy. And I've been getting some tweets as well because we were talking about this last night as well, saying everything was was has gone well for Bangalore except that their big guns haven't fired. And today, all the big guns fired. You had Faf, you had Virat. Virat, of course, was not batting alone. He had his imaginary friends with him because he was talking to, to them through the innings. Uh, and then, of course, uh, Glenn Maxwell, who had a lucky escape. Uh, so all those things went their way. But that's fine. They don't make their luck, right? I mean, that's what happens. You just have to use those opportunities and how well they've used them today. They've used them really well. And I think this was the first time. I mean, Virat has scored another 50 in this tournament. But that 50, I mean, that was the start was just as scratchy as the previous one. But towards the end, we saw the Virat that we've seen, the sort of terror of the IPL, the guy who scored 900 runs in a season. And I think that is you start to see it and you start to see that he's timing. The timing is there. 
when Virat picks off of, on the leg side at will, where he literally his wrist can dictate, he literally knows where the fielder is and knows where to place the ball. That's when Virat is in full on song. And I think that's the Virat we finally saw for the first time. He's got a yeah. 54, but this was the first confident knock, dominating yeah. knock. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's what it is. Because the previous one, that 50, you almost looked at it and say, wait a second, he's actually, has he pulled the team score down? Was that strike rate too slow? Today, it's happened in a chase. It's been decided. It was streaky for a bit. But uh, at the end, when he's finished, he, the strike rate's looking good. And more importantly, he has shepherded the team to a win. This is the Virat we've been aching to see for a while, Tommy. King of chasing. Absolute king of chasing, isn't he? Yeah. And um, I tell you what, the, the shots he played, the kind of willing himself to to be his best, is it was interesting to watch, as you say, imaginary friend and kind of commentating <laughs> and kind of talking us through um, all the way through every single shot. It just shows you how difficult it can get. I mean, um, here we are. Here's Joy saying, pick the guys off on the onside. When was the last time we saw that, where he'd just be placing the ball at will where he wants? Uh, it, it's been a long time, you know, and a long time for us will feel even longer for him because he's so used to getting the runs and mm. he's so used to kind of, you know, if he gets out, he gets out, but not game after game after game after game. And also not being able to do what he wants when he's out on the field. He's that good that generally he does what he wants. So... For this period where things have been very difficult, um, he has kind of got a, 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 a sight, a feeling of, of mortality, you know, out on, mm. on, on the field. And yeah. yeah, it's been difficult to watch. It's nice. I think the order that they want, um, RCB, is what we've seen today, where because the top clicks, so him and, and Faf get off to a good start, they put together some sort of partnership and bat a certain distance in the game, then you can send in Maxwell because the top's virtually taken care of, and what you need is then to finish off. And you mm. want to send in Maxwell, and you want to send in DK after that. That's yeah. when everything is working according to plan and is working perfectly. Should it not be, and one of them get out a bit early, you plug that hole at three, which they like to do. They like to send someone else in at three, to kind of deal with the power play, then Maxwell, then DK to finish off. But it doesn't always go according to plan. It certainly hasn't this season. And so it's meant that it's been kind of a staggered order as you watch as they keep trying to plug and they're trying to fill in a gap that many won't be able to fill in because when he's on song, that's what he does. How do you replace that? Yeah, fantastic he was today. And that's why he's our Omni-Gel relief and recovery performer of the match. Omni Gel, India's number one pain relief gel brand. It not only gives quick relief, but also recovery from pain. No doubt for fans. And uh, today, well, he has... Actually, there's been a lot of pain for Virat fans in the last few months. Maybe I'd go as far as saying a year, a couple of years. But today, it was, it was good. He had the luck, yes. There was a few edges here and there. He pumped himself. It looked a little uncharacteristic in bits. But this is what we want to see. We want to see it come off. So it doesn't matter. It's what uh, Ravi Shastri used to say, right? Joy, you heard him say, he said, look ugly, look ugly. It doesn't matter, right? It's very rare that you can say that about Virat because he scraps. But even when he scraps, he's like a boxer, right? He's Ali, like right? It's just smooth. He ducks and he weaves. But today it was a little more than ducking and weaving. There was a lot of heaving and panting. But that's what you got to do when you got to get the car out of the slush. You got to put on four wheel drive. Yeah, it was. I mean, again, vintage without so many of us will see and see that and say that, you know, that's the kind of innings we are used to seeing from without three, four times in a tournament. Perhaps this is the only time you might see it, you know, given that Delhi's got a last match there. Of course, all RCB fans will be hoping that, you know, Delhi stumbles and they get one more shot at it. I mean, again, it comes to that part of the year when RCB fans are sitting and supporting another team because they will yeah. be rooting for Mumbai. And this yeah. is something we've done over so many seasons. I don't know what's going to be tougher for them. Rooting for Mumbai and not making it to the playoffs. But if they have to swallow a bitter pill, they'd rather be, uh, they'd rather be cheering for their arch nemesis, Mumbai. 
and uh, wanting and willing their team to go into uh, willing their team to go into playoffs because they'd want to see a little more of this Virat who's checked into the game today. Well, uh, that's why Virat was our Omni Gel relief and recovery performer of the match. He ensured there was no doubt for Bangalore fans. 73 of 54 with eight fours and uh, two sixes. I tell you what, he got lucky at one point because Rashid at square leg had come way in for me. And then he also dashed forward. I guess he couldn't pick the ball. He dashed forward, which meant then he was the ball just landed over his head. Yeah, total misjudgment. Total yeah. misjudgment. He, he got that one wrong and yeah, sometimes we speak of luck, don't we? We, we say, yeah. oh, you know, you, you could be lucky and, and you, you'll, you'll score lots of runs or you'll get away with stuff. And um, sometimes you'll be very unlucky. And when it's going badly, uh, that sort of thing, guy goes straight to him. He's the only one there and the guy picks him out, hits it brilliantly and picks him out. And you're like, yeah. oh, you know, he's finally hit one, but he's found the guy, you know. <laughs> and, um, and, and the run sort of goes on. But... Yeah, he used the luck today, and and what was good for me today was it was a, a, a dominant display. Like he, he was looking to dominate, not to yeah. sort of ease his way um, out of. Uh, <laughs> yeah, trouble. he was not. You know, he wasn't. Yeah, he wasn't trying to ease his way and find where he was given a shot. He took it all on and sort of tried to to, to kind of put himself on the bowlers um, as he would do were he in tip top form. And, and it worked. And it worked. Mm, it I'm telling you, four wheel drive. Like, there's some slush flying, but eventually he gets out and he's on uh, the smooth road. We're talking about luck. Just didn't go Gujarat's way today. First up, the Matthew Wade dismissal. Okay, I'm just, I mean, unless it's hit some imaginary roof somewhere, which we can't see, I don't understand how that, how that ball came down, right? It just came down, but well, apparently. That was out LBW. And then after that, Rashid hits the stumps. Now, ever since you're a kid, I don't know what you guys were told about cricket, but if you hit the stumps, <laughs> usually was out. But today, that heavy bale, that heavy bale, which has a little light inside it, jumps out and says, eh, Rashid, sorry, not today, and sits back down. They had luck going their way, Joy, today, uh, Bangalore. Even, even the run out, I mean, I'll tell you mm -hmm. one thing. I've watched Riddhiman Saha for a long time. He's one of the fastest between the stumps. For yeah. Riddhiman Saha to get run out, it happens very, very rarely. So, And he was caught with, again doing something he never does. He was ball watching. Yeah. He was ball watching. The ball goes to mid-off. He's ball watching. He, when he Riddhiman Saha gets, So all these things happen. It's like, let me stick it. A series of unfortunate incidents. But of course, they'll be looking at it and saying, Let's finish our bad luck in this match. We really don't need it. We are one and two anyway. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's good. One worry that I have for them though is they played Lockie today. Today was the day they played Lockie and said, okay, let's get both our fast bowlers, you know, there. And Lockie gets 1.4 overs. His first over is the 12th over. By which time the match is gone. Reasonably yeah. over. Yeah, it's done. Yeah, it was done. Yeah. So yeah. that was something which just caught me a little by surprise, saying that, look, this guy is one of your... You know, at any point in a match, somebody bowling at 150 makes a difference. And it's mm. not that your other blokes are getting a lot of wickets. You haven't yeah. got wickets. So why is this bloke... Why isn't one of your premier strike bowlers not coming in? And I understand mm. that it's probably not the most perfect, but, you know, nobody else has got wickets. Give the man the ball. Yeah, true. And that would have meant that even Shami would not have finished his quota, right? Because this was the 19th that Loki was bowling. And uh, there was just one left. So Shami would have bowled that, which means Shami would have finished with three. And Loki would have finished with two. Uh, just for me, we talk about that. And then we'll talk about Sai Kishore, who was definitely the only impressive bowler today for Gujarat, or the most impressive by far. But let's talk about this, about bowler rotation. Yeah, I mean, the first part is that they've been so used to Shami getting them wickets up at the front. Um, and that didn't happen today. He's, he's been really good. He's not gone for many runs at all. Um, things have gone their way just generally, you know, they, whether it be with bat or with ball. They, even when things haven't gone well with bat up at the front, the other guys have filled in and done it. So today, uh, perhaps a bit more of a test. And, and also having got one six eight. You know, we said it was a middling score, not anything too far above par, if it was above par. 
Um, and the way that um, RCB played showed that it, it wasn't above par. It was just about par. Um, and and in terms of you know Ferguson and you know how much he needed to bowl or how he kind of needed to to work it out. I don't know if there's a, a sort of bit of a mix-up. And the reason he gets dropped before, yes, it's because he's in direct competition with um, uh, with Joseph, but it's also because Hardik begins to bowl again. Mm. So with Hardik bowling again and Hardik able to bowl up at the front and bowl in, in the power play, lucky doesn't normally. They prefer not to use him. I don't know why they... They do, but they just prefer not to use him in the power play. They prefer yeah. to have him come sort of a seventh over and try and bowl in the middle and, and towards the back. And today, the thinking might well have been to go towards those spinners as soon as possible. And then once he kind of did that, it was it was left to kind of having him come in at the back and a bit later than, than he wanted. I don't know. Maybe he just forgot about him because he hasn't had him in the side um, yeah. for, for a couple of games as well. Um, it, it suggests. It suggests looking at it. Actually, it suggests, what? What are you doing here? <laughs> I'm playing today. Yeah. I'm playing. I'm playing. It suggests then, you know, if if he's not going to have him front of mind, um, I don't know that he'll have him front of mind as the eleven that he mm. wants to put out for qualifier number one. Ask who he wants. It, it might. He might not be one of those guys. I, and I don't know. I mean, I, I this is a speculative sort of thought, but. But yeah, it, it, if he if he is the one, one of those you want, unless he's thinking he's bowling just at the death, and I don't think that's what he's thinking because he hasn't gone so well at the, at the back end at the death. Um, mm. You know, he'd he'd have to have bowled him a little bit sooner and, and rotated them a little bit more in that yeah. power play when RCB were going well. I think my worry, my only worry, perhaps for Gujarat is that. When they put under the pump joy and they're chasing, some of their batters just come to a party at a different level than when they come to bat first. Yeah. I mean, especially people like Tevatia, they don't know, they find it difficult to set targets. It's easier for them to know what the run rate is and go after something. And that's shown. I mean, those Tevatia, Rashid Khan, they bat at about, you know, they average about 11. There's the rate of scoring at that when they're chasing is far higher than the rate of scoring. It's about two more than the rate of in the final overs while batting first. And yeah, that yeah. difference simply comes from knowing the target. And that's what I think. The other interesting thing is that, look, you're going to go to new pitches now. Okay? What's, mm. What is going to happen? You're going to go to new pitches. That means you're used, worn. This one day pitch ground has been used 19 times. Okay? Yeah. This is a well-worn pitch. Now you're going to go to a rock-solid, fresh pitch. What's the other thing that's going to happen is anyway, you're not really using Rahul Tevatia. Tevatia mm. now becomes even more useless because mm. I mean, you've not used him here. How are you going to use him in fresher pitches? Mm. And Sai... As a bowler, you mean? Yeah. Mm. And yeah. Sai, who's been bowling well for you, may not get that kind of help that he's getting here. He's one of your crucial bowlers. and He's not going to get the kind of help you he's going to get out there. So it's going to be interesting. I mean, I think that there are if this is a good team who's played out of their skin. They've done really well. But I think there are a few chinks out there that they've got to watch out for. Yeah, well, I mean, Tivatia with a bat, you can tell. He's he's the kid who did his homework in the on the bus stop in the morning and still submitted a perfect paper. And if you told him to do the homework one day before, he'd kind of mess it up and lose interest <laughs> and go away to play and forget the notebook at home. Uh, but yeah, sometimes you need some of those as well. All right, for Bangalore, this has been such an up and down season. Uh, we're going to speak a little about Bangalore's campaign just before we end the show today. I don't want the fans to think that I'm reading an obituary. Everybody calm down. I'm not saying they're done yet. But because they've played their last league game, I'm not saying their last game. Their last league game. That's factually <laughs> correct. You've got to give these disclaimers for Bangalore fans. Right, because they're on a high right now. They're thinking, "Hang on, we're in the top four. Yes, you are, uh, but we we do have to talk about the season because both with them and Delhi, you've got to think that both these teams have they've they have the potential. They've got the mix, and they've just shown it so sporadically this season that it's kind of been a little frustrating, hasn't it, for me for both their fans? Because the days that they come in firing, all guns blazing, you're like, this team is genius. And some days, they, in Bangalore's case, they lose so badly. You're thinking, 
what's going on? Is everybody still asleep? <laughs> what's going? That's why it has just been perhaps for them and their fans such a frustrating campaign of this extreme volatility. The sad part for me is that year after year we say, Do you know what? Look at them. It could be their year. Every single year we say that. And yeah. here we are. We had a uh, an auction or whatever, and you know, we said, right, okay. Um, they've they've had a look and they've let this one go. Maybe they shouldn't have. Maybe they shouldn't have done that. However, let's look at their team. You can't fault this team. You can't. You can't fault once Hazelwood is in there. Hasaranga is pretty good. You're not going to argue with Harshal Patel. Not going to argue with Mohammed Siraj. You're just generally you're you're looking and you're thinking, man, these guys are okay. You're nobody's arguing with the fact that Faf Duplessis has been bought and been made captain. Calm under pressure. Good at the top of the order. Has won the thing with with Chennai and is battle hardened. Dinesh Kartik, also another good buy and will finish things off. And that's bolstered by um, Glenn Maxwell, who's had a really good... And so you're okay. This this should be... This has the makings of a team that would be able to turn over any side in the tournament mm. and should be able to put together some sort of a run. They start off and you think, yes, yeah, it could be okay. Look, they're going okay. Even though their big guns aren't yet, they should be... A, here we are again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like after all of that, bluster, yeah. lots of bluster. But mm -hmm. here we are yeah. again, and they've just got uh, points that could be enough, but yeah. also might not be enough. You know? Yeah, 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 yeah. That's yeah. it. It's what should have been a rope is now a thread. But I think, Joy, the one thing about this team, and it's you look, and we we've spoken about. It may sound like I'm a broken record, but even if they don't qualify this year, I think the things they need to fix for next season are so few, almost negligible. Yeah, I mean, I completely agree with you. That's what I was looking for. On paper, on paper, yeah. you cannot fault the auction strategy of this team. They mm. picked a superb team. They've look, yeah. look at what they've done. They've got they've got death bowlers, they've got yeah. bowlers who take wickets up front, they've got a gun spinner. Yeah. They, in basically Maxwell, they've got two all-rounders, Maxwell and Shabazz, who give them a lot of variety. They've got a finisher. They've got three superb top-order batsmen. What mm. more do you want as a team? I mean, that's what I'm saying. All they, they, they're the one thing that Bangalore will look and say, whatever solutions are there are already there in our squad. We yeah. don't need to look outside. It's already with us. And I think that is something that Bangalore has rarely said. And every year you turn around and say that, okay, no, you've got to go back to the auction, buy somebody. Normally it's bowlers because they never seem to have the right bowlers. But this Bangalore side has very little to pick. It just needs players to be in form at the same time. And yeah. that's what I tell people. It's like a film. You know, I'm not joking. Every this thing campaign is like a film. An IPL campaign is like a film. You can put all the ingredients. You can get the stars. You can get a good director. You can get everything. And then it could be magic. Or it could just, you know, like it could be a Bombay Velvet or it could be, you know, magic. It could be surely. Stop it. I had friends in that movie. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were going to name the Kevin Costner movie, but I suppose that wouldn't be a problem. What a world. <laughs> what a world. Yeah. What? How so could I? Worse, there's a worse film than that. There's a film called Wild Wild World, which is a steampunk film starring Will Smith. Yeah, and right. Will Smith, it was a it was a bomb, a colossal bomb. And mm -hmm. Will Smith chose it over what? The first person who was given the choice to be the guy in Matri Matrix was Keanu Reeves' role was first. What? Off. What? He turns around and says, Yo! I don't think this is great. Let me go and do West uh, this uh, Wild Wild." What? Which is one of the biggest oh, Lord, Lord, Lord. Oh, Lord. Bah. <laughs> well, so he's been making bad decisions for two decades then, hasn't he? <laughs> <laughs> well played, well played, absolutely. And some of them include just walking 20 yards. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> That's <move> right. <laughs> yeah. That's right. We're talking about 22 here. And uh, the 22 <laughs> yards tomorrow, we'll see Rajasthan make a play for the number two spot as they take on Chennai. That's right. 
remember we go all the way back 2008 champions 2009 champions well 2009 champions won it a few times after that 2008 champions. champions i think 2009 was deccan challengers oh sorry 2010 champions upon and 11 then yeah. and 11 uh, they've won it a few times after that, but the 2008 champions never have. Tomorrow, as we see the points table, we see that Rajasthan can uh, get the better of the team they beat in the finals in 2008 and uh, go up to uh, the number two spot. And the reason I say that is uh, that's because they will go level with points with luck now. But of course, if they win, then even if they win just by one run on the last ball, uh, their net run rate will still be better than Lucknow's. So, tomorrow, Lucknow is really cheering for Chennai. <laughs> really cheering for Chennai. And uh, Rajasthan, well, they are cheering for themselves. Yes, because number one and number two. We've said it many, many times. It's really, really important. Not because it's, what, two, what is it? Two bites of the cherry, two bites of the apple. I don't know. It's two chances to get to the final. Simply put, two chances <laughs> to get to the final. Right? Just two bring bites. Stop year. it. Stop it. Well, <laughs> punk, how, when is the last time you had a cherry in two bites? <laughs> two bites at the when have you when have you needed two bites at a cherry? <laughs> I'm a small bite, I mean. Pom is a little birdie. He's a little birdie. Yes. <laughs> Miniature so, bite of me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> What are you doing, Bobby? Just enjoy the cherries. <laughs> I shall be having six bites to finish this. <laughs> All right. Well, so, yeah, extremely important for Rajasthan tomorrow. Let's have a look at uh, their teams. Uh, you know, usually we used to say, oh, Chennai, no changes. Uh, that used to be their season all the time. But we'll get to that in a second. Right now, we just look at uh, the Rajasthan team. And you don't want to make any changes here. Obviously, Shemran uh, Hetmeyer is back now, right? So I'm guessing he'll be available tomorrow. So if he's available, he comes in for Jimmy Nisham? I think he comes straight in for Jimmy Nisham. I think they'll keep McCoy because, you know, whatever happens here... The remaining pitches are also going to be quick pitches. You know, they would playoff pitches are going to be new pitches. I think McCoy will stay. There's a left-hander. He gives them, you know, he and Bolt give them more up front, Prasid Krishna. I think it's just a straight swap, Hetmeyer for Jimmy Nation. Hmm. Where did Kuldeep Sen go, by the way? Did he get injured? Or did no. they just drop him? They just yeah, dropped him. That's the location, yeah. Okay. That's strange because he's... Yeah, been... he had a couple of games where he, he got... Hit a little bit. Yeah, I know, but I mean, yeah, just it's it just makes you think sometimes. The the big guns are getting hit as well, right? In some of the games, when it's yeah. a two hundred game, you know, everyone's getting hit, uh, except Sunil Narayan. Everybody else is getting hit <laughs> but, <laughs> across. You know, the game is playing or not playing, it never gets hit. Uh, but yeah, you got to think about that. But again, Pommy, for you, that's a straight swap, right? Shemran Hetmeyer comes in for James Nisham. Yeah, I think so. I'd, you'll probably want to put that team up again. Um, if Jimmy Nisham goes out and you have Shimran Hetmeyer in, that's a sort of potential uh, bowling. A bo he's he's a more, of, I say, a bowling all rounder uh, more than a batting one is um, Jimmy Nisham. And so it's a kind of thinning of your bowling a little bit in terms of options. So you might want to go yeah. back. You know, you might want to go back to a, a cool deep set and you might try and sort of look for some of the change you could make in order to kind of fit him in there, which is difficult um, um, because essentially Hedmeyer is in just as a batter. And with him in just as a batter, it lengthens the batting order and you perhaps could kind of think about it from a perspective of you, you don't need much more after it. What, what his break will have done in terms of form I think it's particularly important as well. You don't know. You don't know if he comes back and he's straight back on the bike or he comes back and he's got to try and find it again, which would be a pity for, for Rajasthan because he's been going well for them. Yeah, but Shemran Hetmeyer definitely gets back into the squad, back from yep. a little paternity break that he had, rushed back to Guyana for the birth of his uh, first child, and he's back now. So I'm sure he's happy, floating on a cloud, and uh, yeah, that's what Rajasthan wants because Rajasthan really wants to win this game tomorrow. For Chennai, hmm. Well, that's the end of the show. We have okay. No. <laughs> Let's. It's so difficult, right? What do you What do you say, right? It's really hard. This has been a hard season for Chennai fans. Uh, but let's have a look at their team. And again, 
We'll say it again. Just some of the youngsters who've been on the bench, perhaps we'd like to see them. And the one that I'm talking about is Rajwardhan Hangargekar. Jeez, that's a long visiting card. Uh, but yeah, Joy, I'd really like to see him come out uh, and play because Stephen oh, oh. Fleming made a Stephen Fleming made a comment saying that we don't, uh, you know, we don't know if he's ready. We don't want to throw him in the deep end. And I'm I'm a big fan of Stephen Fleming. Agree with everything he says and does, but maybe not with that because. That's how he's going to learn, right? Under 19 star, you throw him into the deep end in a game that has really no consequence for Chennai. So, therefore, no pressure. Just just blood him. No, there, there's a reason for that. And I think there's an important cricketing reason for that, which is that Dhoni still hasn't got his tongue around Hunger Gaker. So, until he's, <laughs> he's not going Naughty. to get tea. Naughty. Naughty. <laughs> no, but seriously. No, I think what, they, what he said was interesting. The fact that he didn't want to sort of put him in early enough for him to get for his you know for his confidence to get damaged i i i think really it's it's time they have to have to play him uh, this is their last match in the tournament he needs to get a chance he needs to at least feel what this ipl is all about what this tournament is all about and look they what are they trying to do they are trying to discover who are the good fits to keep over the next 3 years that's what you're trying to do right now right you're not trying to win a game you're trying to see who, which of these pieces, what are the pieces we're going to build with next year? So, Raidu is definitely probably not going to play. Robin Utopa is not going to play because these guys, they know what they're about. You might keep them. Are they retired or not? You mean, <laughs> are you retiring, Raidu? What are you doing? I don't know. I'm asking if they're retired or if they're not retired. No, he's not. Raidu was, okay. was retired for 15 minutes and then. Okay. okay. Again, this for the second time. Third time? How many is. <laughs> He's retired a few times as well, yeah. But uh, yeah, so, they took it back. Know, he, yeah, he, but he can look at time differently because he's from the fourth dimension, you know. After two <laughs> <laughs> naughty, joy gets uh, joy gets <laughs> joy gets naughty around midnight. He does. Uh, but, yeah, we'd like to see some of the youngsters uh, to play tomorrow. Yeah, Pommy, get the young mm. ones in. Come on. That's how they yeah, it, it's, it would be nice. I think it would be nice. Um, I think what's important, though, is whatever they do in trying to get um, youngsters into the side is to make sure that there's still a, a good balance to what they're trying to do, not, not, not just oh, for the sake of it, right? You're just going to get a go and the team doesn't stack up or balance up correctly because then, you know, you're, you're kind of accused by other teams of giving Delhi a free pass. You know, you don't mm -hmm. want that. You still want to be able to play what is a decent team, a team that you feel can win on the day. Um, even though you're giving another a guy a go, a squad member a go, when you buy whoever it is from the auction, it's because you want them to allow you to win as a team. And so, yeah, stack it up correctly, look to win, and that being the case, you're putting out a team that's strong, then that's fine. I don't have an issue with it. Okay. Well, we've got uh, the Joy Factor question and answer and winner to go through. So let's have a look at the question. And Joy, you can explain it to us as we go along. Okay. Former English captain is thrice in the top four in a particular list. And people... So what's the list we're looking at? Come on. Yes, that's all I'm asking. What's the list we're looking at? And the list is actually the most dismissals by a particular bowler. Oh, oh, well done, yes. Bobby got it right. <laughs> Kapla got him yeah. 19 times. Kurtley Ambrose got him 17 times. Courtney Walsh got him 17 times. I mean, look, say what you will, at least Atherton got out to top class talent. You know, you can look at that and say, you know what, these guys get me out. I don't get out to the normal bowlers, I get out to the very best. Yeah, you got to be there for them to get you out, right? Yeah, <laughs> That's right. You got to. Isn't uh, Graham Smith on this list with Zahir Khan? Come on. Uh, he, he's there a bit lower, I think. He's about 11 or 12. Also, a lot of ODI listings. But I, I think mm. Zahir and Graham is about 11. Uh, I think mm. he got him about Some 11 such. times. Yeah. Close to a, yeah, yeah, a dozen, plus or minus one. All right, who won? Who we got a we got quite a few correct answers, uh, but who won? It was Tanmay Chakravarti. Is uh, this is uh, this is somebody who's been around, yeah, familiar face on the honors board. So congratulations to Tanmay. Are, are all these people? 
Joy, are these people now your friends? Like, are you guys on first name basis? Do you have a club? Do you people meet once every fortnight? Is there a swimming pool, basketball court? No, there's no, 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 no. Quizzes are this strange breed. You'll probably find them in some, some in Middle Earth, some in Mordor, some in this thing, you know, all over the place. Narnia, you know, you know, you find them. Tatooine, you know, Tatooine is in fact people quizzes. Film quizzes in Tatooine are a big thing. Oh, <laughs> wow. Wow. Percy Jackson, one of them as well. Mm. <laughs> maybe, maybe. Okay, yeah. we, uh, of course, many more uh, funky bits of trivia like this from down the ages. Many, many stops that uh, Joy takes on the nostalgia path. And that's available on Retro Reels, which is streaming only on Crick Buzz Plus, streaming worldwide, so catch it. And uh, they're very nicely, it's a bite-sized episodes, right? So they're, they're good. You don't have to, like, you know, say I'm going to take some time out to watch it. You can just, it's eight or ten minutes, right? What was the last episode, Joy? What's the one coming tomorrow? This one coming tomorrow. Tomorrow is, tomorrow is an interesting one because there's a lot of, there's a lot of IPL on it. It's also Kolkata's first title. A lot of IPL stories out there. Some of nice. them really personal, so it's a big one. Next week is good. Nice, to nice. Love it. He's wearing his purple shirt. Look at it. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's why the Night Rider stories are coming. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's uh, going to be dropping tomorrow. So watch it then. We're going to be here tomorrow as well at 7 p.m. Quick Buzz Live in English and in Hindi. I'm reminding people there's one in Hindi as well because that's where I'll be tomorrow. So, you know, <laughs> just, <laughs> just get the audience from wherever you can. Come, come with me. Come on. Come on. The English crew is saying, what? You're still going to do the show. It doesn't matter. I can take a few. Uh, that's okay. Just come. We've got free candy. Come on. Big thank you to Pommy Mbangwa and Joy Bhattacharya. Thank you so much, gentlemen. Thank you for being here this evening. It's closing into midnight. So before I have to say good morning to all of you, I'm going to say good night. This is Gaurav Kapoor on Crick Buzz Live. Big thank you to all of you for staying with us uh, today. And a big thank you to our entire crew sitting in the control room where we can sit in uh, you know, the comfort of our home. So big thank you and a shout out to them as well. Good night, everybody. We'll see you tomorrow. Thank you.